A harsh past can leave wounds no one else can see. And for some people, those wounds grow into CPTSD. According to a 2025 systematic review and meta-analysis, an estimated 6.2% of adults worldwide are living with CPTSD. That's roughly 6 out of every 100 people you meet. For those who have experienced prolonged or repeated trauma, the number rises to nearly 1 in 10. And in high-risk groups, such as psychiatric patients, studies suggest the rate can reach as high as 45%, meaning almost half may be affected. CPTSD is more than just ordinary PTSD. It rewires the way you experience yourself, the people around you, and even the world itself. In this video, we're going to explore what CPTSD really is, break down the science behind it, share insights from trusted research, and look at proven evidence-based ways to begin the journey of healing. Section 1. PTSD versus CPTSD. The Core Differences. PTSD typically develops after a single traumatic event, a car accident, an act of violence, or a natural disaster. People with PTSD often experience flashbacks, nightmares, hypervigilance, and avoidance of reminders related to the trauma. CPTSD, on the other hand, is different. It develops after prolonged and repeated trauma, especially in unsafe environments where the victim cannot escape, for example, domestic abuse, or emotional neglect in childhood. CPTSD not only includes all the core symptoms of PTSD, but also adds three additional clusters of symptoms, known as DSO, emotional dysregulation, deeply negative self-beliefs, and difficulties forming and maintaining healthy relationships. Section 2. How Harsh Childhoods Shape CPTSD Repeated, prolonged traumatic experiences in childhood can fundamentally reshape a child's developing brain and nervous system. These experiences chip away at the basic sense of safety every child needs to thrive. When a child cannot rely on their caregivers for protection or emotional support, their brain adapts for survival by staying in a constant state of hypervigilance, always scanning for danger. Over time, this survival mode becomes the brain's default setting even long after the threat has passed. This chronic state of alertness fuels persistent feelings of shame, guilt, and worthlessness that carry into adulthood. Neuroscience research shows that long-term stress disrupts the HPA axis and alters key brain regions such as the amygdala and hippocampus, making those with CPTSD more easily startled, vulnerable to insomnia, and overly reactive to even small everyday triggers. Section 3. Scientific Evidence of Its Prevalence Global studies reveal that complex post-traumatic stress disorder, CPTSD, is far more common than most people realize. On average, about 6.2% of the world's population is estimated to be living with CPTSD. But this number isn't fixed. It varies depending on the population and context of the study, ranging anywhere from 1% to 8%. What's even more striking is that in psychiatric care settings, the rate can reach as high as 50%, meaning one in every two patients may be struggling with CPTSD. These numbers highlight that CPTSD is not a rare phenomenon, but a serious public health concern. It calls for greater awareness from mental health professionals, healthcare systems, and society as a whole to ensure timely recognition, intervention, and support for those affected. Section 4. The Three-Phase Treatment Model Treatment for CPTSD is most effective when approached through a structured three-phase model that has been widely recommended by trauma experts. The first phase, stabilization, is all about building a strong foundation of safety, both physical and emotional. During this stage, individuals learn practical skills to regulate their nervous system, grounding exercises to stay present, mindful breathing to calm the body, and self-soothing techniques to manage distress. This phase is crucial because it gives survivors a sense of control and stability before moving into deeper work. The second phase, trauma processing, focuses on working through traumatic memories in a safe and controlled way. Well-researched methods like EMDR or TFCBT are used here, but only once the person is emotionally ready. Finally, the reintegration phase helps restore trust, 
rebuild healthy relationships, and create a life that feels meaningful and sustainable, turning survival into true recovery. Section 5. Evidence-Based Therapies TFCBT is one of the most effective treatments for PTSD and, when appropriately adapted, has shown very good outcomes for CPTSD as well. EMDR has been supported by numerous meta-analyses demonstrating significant reductions in PTSD symptoms and is also effective for CPTSD when applied with proper protocols. DBT can be especially helpful for individuals who struggle with emotional regulation or impulsive behaviors. Body-based therapies such as somatic experiencing, sensory motor psychotherapy, and trauma-informed yoga work by releasing stored tension from the nervous system, allowing the body to return to a state of safety. Schema therapy and group therapy provide additional support by helping individuals transform deeply rooted negative beliefs and by offering a safe social environment where trust and connection can be rebuilt. Section 6. Prevention and Mitigation of CPTSD Prevention of CPTSD starts early, at the level of both families and entire communities. It begins by recognizing and addressing unsafe environments as soon as possible, including early detection of abuse, neglect, or exposure to chronic stress. Supporting parents with education on healthy caregiving, attachment, and emotional attunement can dramatically lower a child's risk of developing long-term trauma responses. Children also benefit from learning age-appropriate skills for emotional regulation, grounding, and expressing their feelings safely. At the community level, building trauma-informed systems in schools, hospitals, and social services helps create environments where survivors feel safe, respected, and believed, reducing the risk of re-traumatization. After major traumatic events, providing psychological first aid, ongoing mental health check-ins, and access to trained professionals can prevent acute stress reactions from evolving into acute CPTSD giving survivors a much better chance at recovery. Section 7. Practical Advice If you suspect that you or someone close to you may have CPTSD, the first and most important step is to seek out a mental health professional or doctor experienced in using the three-phase treatment model. Avoid diving straight into painful memories right away, Prioritizing emotional stabilization and creating a sense of safety first will make the healing process much more effective. Alongside professional treatment, actively build a healthy support network. Trusted friends, family, or community support groups who can provide understanding and encouragement. It's also helpful to access reliable information from organizations like the NCTSN or WHO to ensure you're following evidence-based guidance and avoid self-handling in ways that might deepen the harm. Above all, be patient with yourself. Healing is a gradual process that requires time, consistency, and compassion. A difficult childhood does not define who you are or where your story ends. CPTSD may leave deep and invisible scars, but it is not a life sentence. You are not broken beyond repair. With the right knowledge, compassionate professional support, and small, consistent steps towards emotional self-care, you can slowly loosen the grip of the past. Bit by bit, you rebuild your sense of safety, reclaim your voice, and rediscover your capacity to trust in yourself and in others. Healing is not a straight line, and it takes time, patience, and courage. But every small step you take today, no matter how tiny, is a victory worth celebrating. Thank you for staying with me until the very end of this video. If you found this content helpful or know someone who might need it, please like, subscribe, and share so more people can find this message. And I'd love to hear from you. Leave a comment sharing your thoughts or experiences. Your voice matters. See you in the next video.